Celebrities! They're just like us, except better paid, better looking, and their parents used to play squash with Francis Ford Coppola. Celebrities also, on occasion, get to do a voice in a video game, but you wouldn't always know it from playing said video game, because the casting is so unexpected, or took place before they became mega famous. Consider these surprising celebrity video game appearances you hadn't clocked. Oh, and if you're Francis Ford's agent, call me back about that squash game. What? It's an investment in my kid's future. Beware spoilers for these two games, and also one Spider-Man movie. Uh... Excuse me, do you speak English? I like to think so. Not enough to get by anyways. You? Yeah, I... Wait, what do you mean? When Hong Kong set action-adventure Sleeping Dogs launched in 2012, the makers of the game could never have guessed that in just four years, one of their actors would be winning an Oscar. And believe it or not, it wouldn't be for her performance as their game's blogging love interest, Amanda Cartwright. My name's Amanda, by the way. Or Amy. Either one is fine. So, Amanda was played by Hollywood sweetheart Emma Stone. So, uh, was this like a, a date? Which means Emma Stone paved the way for her prize-winning performance in 2016's Oscar-hogging jazzy romance La La Land by playing one of Wei Shen's potential girlfriends in Sleeping Dogs. Sure, Ryan Gosling can dance, but can he do kung fu? He probably can, can't he? He's the total package. The point, though, is that Emma Stone doubtlessly credits her role as Amanda in Sleeping Dogs for launching her to superstardom, and not, say, her role as Gwen Stacy in The Amazing Spider-Man, which came out the same year as that game. Sure, Wei Shen isn't a Spider-Man, but also he didn't let his girlfriend die by falling off a clock tower. Come on, Peter, do better. What can I do for you? I'm looking for this place. Old Temple Academy? In Sleeping Dogs, Amanda is introduced as an American tourist who's smart enough to scout out the best kung fu school in Hong Kong, but not smart enough to put on a helmet when our Wei Shen drives her there with an absolute minimum regard for road safety. <laughs> Further on in the game, Wei Shen can take Amanda on a date to a local park, where the key activity is taking photos that she says she likes, but I guarantee you she doesn't. That's definitely going on her stories, but not on her grid. At any rate, once you're told Amanda Cartwright is played by Emma Stone, the voice is unmistakable. But until then, you might not have believed you were listening to Emma Stone in a video game. Everyone thinks it's so cool that I get to do a video game. They're like, really? See? Even our friends didn't believe it. How about you drop the gun, honey? If I were you, I'd listen to the lady. Long before 2022's Saints Row, there was the first game in the Saints Row series, which was also called Saints Row. I've said it too many times now, it sounds weird. Saints Row. Saints Row. Saints Row. Saints Row. Saints Row is a six-game franchise that exists pretty much solely because back in 2006, it was the first open-world crimson to appear on the Xbox 360, almost a full two years before GTA 4 came out. Back in 2006, though, the Saints Row series was an entirely unknown quantity, which makes it all the more surprising to discover that it was the video game voice acting debut of now huge Hollywood star Mila Kunis. You know, sometimes I just want to say fuck it all and go to Hollywood, you know? Wow, did they leave the microphone running at the end of the recording session? In the game, Kunis plays Tanya Winters, a lieutenant in the Vice King's gang and a brothel madam who ends up a major thorn in the Saints' side over the course of the story. I kill people, I die, this is fabulous! You know, what, what else can you ask for? While Kunis at the time wasn't quite the universally recognised leading lady she'd eventually become, her voice was at least familiar to fans of Family Guy. Are you gonna let him talk about me like that? Oh, it just sounds weird without someone saying shut up Meg immediately afterwards. By the time the character Tanya Winters reappeared in Saints Row 4 in 2013, Kunis was unavailable to reprise the role, and Volition had to hire a different voice actor instead. Please, you don't have the balls. In fact, when that game came out, she was busy filming Jupiter Ascending, the baffling $150 million sci-fi film where Channing Tatum plays a sort of dog man. Her Majesty's life has got to change, if she wants it to. I'm still the same me. So her role's definitely got bigger in the seven intervening years, but which is more embarrassing, appearing in Jupiter Ascending or a subpar GTA ripoff? It's not for us to say. Jupiter Ascending. Oh! <gasps> Never tell me what I can't do. Walter! We can't let him kill all those people. You're his sister. Maybe he'll listen to you. 
We have to do something. What are you doing here? The war room is no place for a child. Leave now. I'm here to stop you. You can't kill those people. The Fable series is well known for giving prestigious actors a pop at video game voice acting, with the eminent likes of Zoe Wanamaker and Stephen Fry stepping into the recording booth for Lionhead's fantasy franchise. Also, Sir Ben Kingsley. I am Sabine, elder of the Dweller tribe. This is my first experience of voicing a video game. So Ben Kingsley there, who played Sabine, the King of the Dwellers. All right, I'll shout Sabine's history of the Dweller tribe. And I apologise to any Welsh players of the game for my Welsh accent, but I did have a go. He certainly did. But although there's no mistaking a character played by Stephen Fry, or failing to recognise the distinctive voice of Zoe Wanamaker as Teresa the Seer, Sabine is a good man, and his people are strong. That's the one. Much less obviously recognisable was the Oscar-nominated actor behind the voice of Fable 3's Tyrant King, Logan. You are no longer a child, and it is time I stopped treating you as one. If you had told us that none other than Michael Fassbender took time out of his illustrious screen acting career to play your dickhead older brother in Fable 3, we would have roundly mocked you for your wrong fact, before checking IMDb and finding out you were 100% correct. It's my first time playing a video game character and uh, it's really interesting because it's another sort of form of storytelling. Yes, it was Irish actor Michael Fassbender who so compellingly voiced Logan, bringing to life a character who, much like Fassbender's Magneto or Macbeth, is a nuanced kind of villain and who eventually turns out to be somewhat sympathetic in his villainy. This is my Albion. Its people will do as I say, or they will die. I said somewhat sympathetic, and eventually. With Fassbender disappearing into the role of King Logan and pulling off an accent more convincing than Sir Ben's, players may well not have clocked the star of Steve Jobs doing a voice in Fable 3. The sacrifices I had to make, I did them to protect Albion. Or possibly they were just distracted by how mad they were at Logan for forcing them to sacrifice their adorable boyfriend Nicholas Holt to save a crowd of innocent citizens. I will never forgive you for this. Good then you will never forget it. Still haven't forgiven you, Michael. Could very well destroy the Kingdom of Albion. <laughs> Just like that poster. There you go, baby. Come to Daddy. Woohoo! Here, let me see that. How much you think's in here, anyway? Enough. <laughs> 2009 Wii game, Deadly Creatures, is essentially a game about the top five things you don't want to find in your shoes when you put your feet in. Before we continue, if you have an inherent mistrust of anything with more than four legs, it might be time to click on one of our other fine videos in the YouTube sidebar. Deadly Creatures saw you playing as a tarantula and a scorpion out in the Sonoran Desert, and was particularly notable in that it had a full motion control scheme where your Wii controller movements mimicked the attacks performed by the giant hairy spider on your screen. You know, so you can feel like you're holding it in your hand. Now, while we'd love to be able to inform you that the two arachnid stars of the game are voiced by Hollywood royalty, it's actually the sole two human characters you encounter that are performed by surprisingly well-known actors. I'm going to have to loosen my drawers or something. Start here? No, no, I'm just getting my bearings. It's over this way. While you're busy doing unsettling, creepy, crawly stuff, the human characters George Struggs and Wade are nearby searching for buried Civil War gold and are played by Oscar-nominated actor Dennis Hopper and Oscar-nominated actor Billy Bob Thornton, respectively. That's cause it's dried horse crap. What? What'd you do that for? I didn't do nothing. You're the one rubbing crap on himself and you stop messing around. If only the Academy had heard these performances. In truth, Deadly Creatures is an extremely short game, around four hours long, and even by those standards, Hopper and Thornton are barely in it. Desert seems like a dead place, but it's alive. They have a few snatches of dialogue here and there, but you spend most of the time battling other gross creatures in a series of claustrophobic underground tunnels. But if the game Deadly Creatures achieved nothing else, at least it allowed you to climb into the pants of Oscar-nominated actor Dennis Hopper and sting him in the junk. I'm just saying, the Academy, Dennis Hopper was robbed. 
I'm very happy with what I did today, so uh, I feel good about it all. In the year of the dragon, in a world beyond the realms, I, like all the others, awaited the birth of the dragon of whom the prophecies foretold. When considering Elijah Wood's body of work, the first thing that comes to mind is his unforgettable performance as Frodo Baggins, followed closely by his unforgettable performance in MTV Presents The Next Generation Xbox Revealed. Xbox 360 is gonna be amazing, and I look forward to meeting with all of you in the Xbox 360 universe. Lord of the Rings and the Xbox 360? Name a single better decade than the noughties. Go on, I'll wait. That's right, there isn't one. What probably doesn't spring to mind, though, when contemplating the career of Elijah Wood is the actor's performance as the titular dragon hero in The Legend of Spyro. I can't, Ignitus. I just learned what I am. He's like a scaly purple Frodo. Adorable. Elijah Wood provided the voice of Spyro in the Legend of Spyro trilogy, which rebooted the long-running Spyro series in the late noughties, the decade when anything seemed possible. What are you? What are we? What am I? Over the course of The Legend of Spyro A New Beginning, The Legend of Spyro The Eternal Night, and The Legend of Spyro Dawn of the Dragon, young Spyro ventured forth to save the world of the dragons. I'm not sure what help I can be, Ignitus, but I'll try. I'll try. This more combat-focused trilogy might not have fully set the world on fire, but that wasn't for want of big-name voice talent among the cast, which besides Elijah Wood also included Oscar winner Gary Oldman Draw strength from each other and follow your heart. That's the one, along with none other than voice acting icon Mark Hamill, whose voice, we regret to inform you, was so distorted for the role of Malifor the Dark Master that you would be hard pressed to recognise it was him. Why would you do that to Mark Hamill? Regardless, the much more easily recognised voice of Elijah Wood was a perfect match for another fantasy trilogy in which a small hero goes on a perilous quest to stop the forces of evil. Only this one can breathe fire. No! It's better than a ring that makes you invisible. I'm just saying. In the late 90s and early 2000s, there was a video game for every single extreme sport. That's how we ended up with games as varied as aggressive inline, extreme rock climbing, and a uh, toxic grind? Oh, looks like we have a loser. Toxic grind? Sounds like when I used to play Call of Duty online. Eventually, though, they ran out of extreme sports and had to start taking regular sports and making them extreme, which is how we ended up with 2002's Outlaw Golf. Just thread the needle and keep it straight. 367 yards, par 4. Word. This PS2 and GameCube game by developer Hypnotics took the ordinarily reasonably sedate sport of golf and added bleak, dilapidated courses. What you got here is your garden variety 460 yard par 4 facing a nuclear power plant. A cast of characters based on clumsy stereotypes. Now is your time to love me. And a ton of fairly embarrassing adolescent nonsense about women. Please welcome Sultry Summer and her equally ample caddy, Autumn. Remember, gentlemen, after the game, these ladies will be available for autographs and lap dances. Bring plenty of singles. This is the most 2002 game ever made. You may or may not have noticed the distinctive voice behind that commentary. It was now comedy legend Steve Carell, who has Outlaw Golf and its sequel Outlaw Volleyball forever staining his list of credited roles. What a piece of shoot! That was a bad shot. In the years before The Office and his first major film role in Anchorman in 2004, Carell provided the colour commentary for Outlaw Golf, in which he brought all of his comedic talents to bear trying to make a substandard Tiger Woods PGA Tour clone into an interesting and exciting video game. Now there's a slice and I'm not talking apple pie! Results were... mixed. Needless to say, by some miracle, appearing in PGA with added T and A didn't hurt his career. Carell was catapulted to stardom and the Outlaw series of sports games is now almost completely forgotten. 
By the year 2005, developer Hypnotics was releasing its final ever game, Outlaw Tennis, while Steve Carell was appearing in smash hit comedy The 40 Year Old Virgin. Which is actually based on a true story. It's about the guy who wrote the jokes in Outlaw Golf. Come on, you can tell I know how to handle a stick. Whoa! <laughs> Give me a break, Kyrie. Sorry, you lazy bum. Role-playing franchise Kingdom Hearts is a rich melting pot that blends both its own fantastical mythos with Disney intellectual property in a way that makes you go, are we sure Disney knows about this? Well, are we? Only in Kingdom Hearts can you find yourself watching a scene where Mickey Mouse's pet dog Pluto is menaced on a tropical beach by a quartet of zipper-mouthed weirdos known as Nobodies before this nobody with better hair named Axel sends Pluto and his human friend fleeing through a portal of darkness. I feel like we're friends already. <sighs> You're not acting very friendly. She's not wrong. You're not. The girl in pink you just heard from there is Kyrie, a close friend of series protagonist Sora, and believe it or not, her voice is that of genuine famous person Hayden Panettiere. You think it'll ever be the same again between us? Riku's lost his... When I turned into a heartless, you saved me, remember? Hayden Panettiere voiced the character of Kyrie in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 well before she was propelled to big time fame by her leading role in TV superhero drama Heroes. How hot do you think it is in there? Kyrie was later recast, while Panettiere's character took her in other directions on film and television and not video games, except many years later in Until Dawn, in which there was no mistaking who played the part of Sam on account of Panettiere providing both her voice and likeness. Well, actually, the towel didn't turn out to be the best outfit for fighting off killer maniacs, you know. Do you mind? Keen Kingdom Hearts fans, however, will forever remember Hayden Panettiere as the actor who originated the role of Kyrie, and I will forever remember Kingdom Hearts as the place where I heard Mickey Mouse say this. Say, fellas, did somebody mention the door to darkness? And that's with Disney's permission. Imagine what they're going to do when Mickey Mouse enters the public domain next year. They'll pay for this. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you'd like to see more from us, we have a video up here which is about sort of technical peaks behind the curtain in video games. It's very interesting. And down here, we have a hard-hitting investigation by Outside Extra about live service games that were almost immediately killed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm just on the phone. Hello? Yeah, yeah. What, what about Thursday? Oh, he, he must be free Thursday night. What's, what's he doing? Making Apocalypse Now 2? I think not. <laughs>